Hi, I'm Brian Fury, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, cells. Cells are often considered the most basic unit of life. Anything smaller than a cell, it's often considered not living. The one exception is the virus. Just a protein coat and genetic information, it's often considered living despite not having cells. Cells were discovered by Robert Hooke and Anton von Leeuwenhoek at about the same time. Both were using light microscopes. Robert Hooke looked at cork cells, and Anton von Leeuwenhoek looked at pond scum, teeth scrapings, and other people's teeth scrapings. Gotta love that guy. Cells come in two main flavors, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, whereas eukaryotic cells do. Let's look at the prokaryotic cell first. First off, prokaryotic cells and bacteria are the same thing. If you ever see a prokaryote, it's a bacteria, and vice versa. Okay, prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus, so their DNA is drifting about. They also contain plasmids, other bits of DNA that they can exchange with other bacteria. The boundary of the prokaryotic cell is defined by the cell membrane, which is described as a phospholipid bilayer. Don't let that crazy phrase scare you. It just means two layers of lipids. Here is one of those lipids. The head, if you will, is hydrophilic, meaning that polar and charged substances are attracted to it, whereas nonpolar substances are repelled. The tails, however, are hydrophobic. In other words, charged and polar substances are repelled, whereas nonpolar substances are attracted. This means that it's very easy for nonpolar substances, such as fats or lipids, to pass through the cell membrane, whereas charged or polar substances will have to go through some of the proteins embedded in the membrane. One of the exceptions is water, which is small enough that it can simply slip through. Now, in this particular diagram, the prokaryotic cell looks as about the same size as the eukaryotic cell. This is not drawn to scale. The prokaryotic cell is actually a lot smaller. Around the cell membrane is also the cell wall, another layer of protection. This is made up of mostly dead material, and in bacteria it's made up of something known as peptidoglycan. More on that later. On the inside of the cell, we have the cell filled with cytoplasm, a clear jelly-like substance. You see it in all cells, regardless of their type. The only real organelle inside a bacterium is the ribosome. Organelles are kind of like small organs that all cells have. The ribosome, for instance, produces only protein. Okay, so let's turn over to the eukaryotic cell. The eukaryotic cell has a nucleus, which contains all the DNA for the cell. It also contains a good number more organelles than the prokaryotic cell. For instance, the endoplasmic reticulum, ER for short. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, rough ER and smooth ER. Some cells have both. Rough ER contains ribosomes and produces proteins. Smooth ER performs detoxification, detoxifying substances such as alcohol. You see a lot of smooth ER in liver cells. Whenever the ER produces something, it usually goes to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus packages these substances in vacuoles, bits of membrane, kind of like plastic wrap, and then sends them to wherever they're needed, either inside the cell or out. Other organelles include the mitochondria. Mitochondria produce energy from sugar. All eukaryotic cells have these. Also, the lysosome. Lysosomes are just vacuoles filled with digestive enzymes. If parts of the cell break down, the lysosome will come along and digest them. If invaders enter the cell, such as viruses and bacteria, the lysosome will digest them. Now, for plant cells, not animal cells, there's also the chloroplast. These will perform photosynthesis, and there are often multiple ones per cell. Additionally, plant cells will have a cell wall. This is similar to the one in bacteria, but the material is different. Whereas bacterial cell walls are made up of peptidoglycan, plant cell walls are made up of something known as cellulose. To recap, cells are often considered the most basic unit of life. Anything smaller, and it's usually not considered living. Cells are discovered by Robert Hooke and Anton von Leeuwenhoek. They come in two main types, eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, where their DNA is simply floating around in the cytoplasm, a clear jelly-like substance. Their DNA can also be found in plasmids, which will be exchanged with other bacteria when they meet. Also inside the cytoplasm are ribosomes, which produce nothing but protein. Surrounding the prokaryotic cell is a cell membrane defining the boundaries. This is the same for all cells and contains a phospholipid bilayer. But the phospholipids have a hydrophilic head, which attracts water and polar substances but repels nonpolar substances, and hydrophobic tails, which does the opposite, attracting nonpolar substances but repelling polar substances. Fats and lipids find it easy to go straight through the membrane, whereas charged and polar substances usually have to go through proteins embedded in the membrane. 
Surrounding prokaryotic cells outside of the cell membrane is a cell wall composed mostly of peptidoglycan. Eukaryotic cells have a nucleus which contains all the DNA and also an endoplasmic reticulum. Rough ER produces proteins. Smooth ER detoxifies things. Things produced by the endoplasmic reticulum usually go to the Golgi apparatus, which are packed and then are packaged in vacuoles and sent off to other parts. The eukaryotic cell also contains mitochondria to produce energy from sugar and lysosomes to digest things including broken down cell parts and bacteria and viruses. Chloroplasts are found pretty much only in plant cells and produce photosynthesis. Plant cells also have a cell wall made up of cellulose. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Pierce. See you next time.